Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to the um, Tuesday, March the 30th, uh, 2021 uh, edition of the Bartimaeus Report. Now, let me uh, say at the outset, this video is not for everyone. There will be people who I would prefer not to watch it and not to respond. Uh, this video is not for trolls, and uh, if you are a troll and you watch it and you send me stuff, I am not going to even bother responding. Uh, and any comments that you may make, I am just going to uh, delete. However, this video is for people, not that they have to agree with me or agree with uh, my conclusions, who want to actually learn. Now, my experience has been that in my dialogue with my Muslim friends, that there are some, not a lot, who actually want to learn and have a, a real conversation, but unfortunately I found the great majority uh, just want to, um, you know, they don't, want to, they don't want to have a real discussion, they just want to uh, ask a question without really uh, listening. And again, this video is not for you. Well, this morning I got this question from a Muslim. And since I was asked specifically uh, regarding this, I decided I would answer. Now, I hope the individual is sincere. And uh, let's see, just a minute, I have to let me do a pause for a moment. I got a little tickle in my throat. Sorry about that. I found a little, I'm glad I got a little cough button on here. But this is a question. Since the Trinity uh, is not textually found, uh, can any uh, volunteer or volunteer Christians try to uh, explaining it to us logically? And that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, I would agree that the word Trinity is not found in uh, the Bible uh, at, in the same way that the word Tahid is not found in the Quran, although I acknowledge that the word Tahid uh, is taught in the Quran. It is a concept and it is a, if I may use uh, a word, a theological concept that is taught in the Quran in the same way the doctrine of the Trinity is taught in the scriptures. But I wanted to, uh, and so I've put together this little video or this little presentation that I hope will be a help. Now, I am not going to uh, quote any scripture uh, in it because I don't think about what I want to do is basically is for especially uh, my Muslim friends and some Christians who do not really uh, have a, a grasp, uh, a theological grasp of the Trinity. And um, I remember at a, I went to a debate between a, I can't remember who the fellow is, it was at um, the uh, Dawa Center in Toronto that where Shabir uh, uh, Ali is the imam and was a doctrine on the Trinity. And the guy really did, really did a poor job. He, he, wasn't, re he wasn't really ready for it. And uh, in fact, uh, Shabir did a much better job than this individual. And I asked this uh, individual if, whether or not he could give me a, both a theological and historical definition of the Trinity. And he said he didn't, really couldn't, really wasn't all that interested in it. But I do think it's important. And so uh, this presentation is going to hopefully give our Muslim friends here a uh, a theological and historical definition of the Trinity. So here we go. And um, again, this is a presentation that I've wanted to do for some time. And so by the question that I've gotten from my Muslim friend here, uh, I've decided just to get it put together. And um, I've decided to call this basic... Christianity for Muslims, understanding the doctrine of the Trinity. Go on here. And I have found that, you know, very often 
in our discussions that we wind up talking past one another. We may use the same words, but we have a, a different concepts. And I think there's a lot of misunderstanding, misconceptions. Uh, and so, again, this, uh, this presentation is basically is to try to uh, answer some uh, Muslims' misunderstandings. And as I said earlier, the, the doctrine of the Trinity uh, is not invented by the early church, but rather a doctrine that is uh, necessarily derived from the reading of, of Scripture. And so when, a per when we read the whole of Scripture, when we look at all of Scripture, both found in the Old Testament, and I hope to do a video, uh, Lord willing, sometime in the future, uh, about the Trinity in the Old Testament, may I, I would recommend uh, Anthony Rogers, who has done a lot of work on that. And, uh, uh, and uh, if you want to look at where is the Trinity found in the Old Testament. But uh, as we said earlier, the word, the, the word uh, Trinity is not found uh, in the entire Bible, but it is a doctrine that is derived by the reading of the whole of Scripture. But anyways, let's look and see. When we talk about uh, both Christians and Muslims believe in monotheism, but when we talk about monotheism, there is, uh, this is what, one of the points where we begin to talk past one another. And as we can see is that uh, when I talk about the Trinity, I'm thinking, or when I talk about monotheism, I'm thinking of the idea of a triune God, a God that is uh, both uh, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet one God. Our Muslim friends are thinking um, basically one God only. Uh, they are thinking one person only. And, every, and, and of course, uh, when we look at the uh, Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, or Yahweh, our, our God, the Lord is one. They are thinking of one person. And that brings me to this. And this is, a, this is from a book called, uh, here, let me bring it, so I can bring it up in here. Okay, there we go. Um, our God is Triune, and it's an essay, there are many uh, biblical essays. Uh, and this particular one is from um, a good friend of mine, Edward Decour. And I'm just going to read the quote for you. Uh, Unitarian assumptions um, of, be, uh, of being in person. When discussing the Trinity and or the deity of the Son, with uh, Unitarian groups, we must be aware of their starting points, uh, starting theological uh, commitment, namely, God is one person. In other words, every time one is applied to God, the Unitarian reads into the term one as a person. Hence, by default, the Unitarian reinterprets monothe monotheism to mean unipersonalism. Although there is no passage in the, New, in the Old Testament or the New Testament which clearly identifies God as one person. Remember that. No passage identifies God as one person. It is the one fundamental premise which Unitarian groups launch their attacks on the doctrine of the Trinity and the deity of Christ, and thus uh, rejecting any notion of another person, i.e. that Jesus is God. I think this is really uh, an important point that when we talk about uh, one God, because both Muslims, Christians, and Jews all agree that there is only one God, but we are, discuss we are making the distinction between the being of God and the person of God. Now, 
I was asked to explain logically, you know, the Trinity and whether the doctrine of the Trinity violates logic. So let's look at a couple, you know, a couple of laws of, you know, of, of logic here. The first one is the law of non-contradiction. And most of you should know this. A cannot be A and not A at the same time and in the same manner. Now, I've added to this, uh, it's the same thing, but uh, you'll see my point. Uh, and the same way is B cannot be B and not B at the same time in the same manner. And so we're going to make a distinction here between category A and category B. And what I see is when uh, the questions that I've gotten from my Muslim friends is basically uh, when they ask uh, me questions, they're based on a false premise and they are actually making an error in category. They are confusing category A with category B. Category A is the, the being or the essence of God, the substance of God, what God is ontologically, uh, those attributes which define God as God. So let's think for a moment here about what category A is. We are talking about the being or essence of God, the substance of God, what God is ontologically. Again, those attributes which, um, you know, define God as as being God. Category B is who God is. So keep that in mind. Category A and category B. And again, we, I, this is, you know, we see this so often, it gets a bit, <laughs> and a lot of Christians try to answer it too. You know, I believe one plus plus one plus one plus one equals three. There's no place in the universe uh, no way that it can ever equal one. And some Christians will say, well, you know, Steve, and you know, one times one times one equals one. That, I think, is a poor answer. That is not the way to answer it, but it is a confusing of category A, again, the uh, absolute being of God with category B, which is the person of God. Next one. So now I think we can try to give at least a historical and theological definition of God or definition of the Trinity. And first of all, let's look at what the Trinity is not. This is a diagram that is found in a book by James White, The Forgotten Trinity. I think it's very, very helpful. And you can see it's a proverbial triangle here. Uh, and the points of the triangle are all basically... Uh, errors and the lines of the triangle are biblical truths so if we look at this if we remove any one of the lines uh, you will see what it, it, the arrow will point to um, an error so if we remove the line of monotheism you can see it points to basically uh, tritheism if we point the um, uh, remove the line of the three persons, then we get into modalism. Uh, and if you remove the line of it, uh, equality, then you get into subordinationism. So that's just to keep in mind. I hope that is, uh, again, helpful. And as I said earlier, this is basically is to help us understand each other so that when we discuss certain doctrines, at least we're not talking past one another. The Trinity is also built on uh, three foundations. Maybe let me just remove this because this is in the way. There we go. Um, foundation one is that there is monotheism. There is only one God. Foundation two, uh, there are th uh, three divine persons. And foundation three, these persons are co-equal and co-eternal. Again, uh, from the Forgotten Trinity, if you are able to get a copy of that book, I highly recommend it. Get it at Amazon. You can get it on your Kindle, uh, probably under $20. And we can look at this, that 
uh, and I think this is a diagram that people see, but uh, we want to make sure there's no confusion. We can say that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. We are talking about the uh, in uh, uh, God in His essence, and so all that the um, God is, the Holy Spirit is. All that the uh, all that God is, the Father is, and and all that the uh, God is, the Son is. But they are not to be confused one with another. Again. We don't want to confuse category A and category B. 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. So what can we say? A theological and historical definition of the Trinity, God is one in his being, category A, and three in his person, category B. Or uh, as uh, James White has pointed out again in the Forgotten Trinity, the what and the who, the being of God, is what God is ontologically, again, category A, and the person of God uh, is what God, uh, or who God is, again, category B. And in the one being that is God, again, category A, there, are, there exist eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, uh, Category A, or I'm, I'm sorry, Category B, the Son, again, Category B, and uh, oh, I made a mistake. The Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And these are basically three, pers three persons in the one being who is God. And as I started off with, the Trinity is derived from uh, the whole of Scripture. Now, in concluding, in concluding, I would just like to say that um, uh, this video is basically is to promote a real discussion and uh, to define exactly what the doctrine of the Trinity is. Uh, one of the things that I think that we struggle with as finite creatures is understanding the infinite. Um, and I would, I would agree that, uh, well, when we look at the doctrine of God, when we look at the doctrine of God, how do we wrap our mind around a, a, be, a being that is eternal, that, has, that exists outside of time? How do we wrap our mind around a, a, a God that is, is present everywhere? Uh, yeah, you know, it's just that we, we, it can't be done. And if we could reduce God to our own, our own finite brains, he would become like us. And the only way we can describe God is in language. I mean, that's, and even then it, it is an, it truly is an injustice, to, uh, you know. When we, but that's the only way that we can we can manage that. So uh, I hope this is helpful. And as I said at the outset, that this uh, video is not for everyone. This video is for those who wish to uh, have an honest and open dialogue. Again, by that I don't mean you have to agree with me but so that we do not talk past to one another. One another. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and may God uh, bless.